I'm standing outside an English pub on a crisp autumn day, holding a pint of hand-pulled ale in one hand and paper-wrapped fish and chips in the other. Next to me, a factory engineer casually takes a drag from a hand-rolled cigarette, and we're enthusiastically chatting about the vintage British motorcycle parked in front of us. It's a scene straight out of an English nationalist daydream. But if you take a closer look, there's more to the story. This isn't just any pub. It's a recreated piece of history, nestled in the heart of a living history museum. The factory engineer beside me is actually a Royal Enfield PR rep, dressed in a retro 1950s style turtleneck and work coat, along with the other Royal Enfield team members here. And that classic British twin? It's actually the 2025 Royal Enfield Classic 650, made proudly in Chennai, India. There's a lot more to say, but let's get straight to the bike. 2025 Royal Enfield Classic 650. A visually stunning bike with retro appeal, free from old-school reliability issues. Pros. Absolutely gorgeous design. Smooth, satisfying engine with a great exhaust note. Did I mention how good it looks? Cons. Rev limiter cuts in a bit early during spirited rides. Engine vibration could be a nuisance on long freeway runs. Removing exhaust is necessary for chain maintenance. So, is it any good? You ask. Absolutely. Seriously? It's not just the beer and swag talking. Yes, seriously. I had my expectations based on Royal Enfield's previous models, and this bike blew them out of the water. It's still a 47 horsepower ride with tube tires and non-adjustable suspension, but in terms of quality and enjoyment, it's so much better than you'd expect. A quick note on Royal Enfield's roots. While founded in Redditch, England, the brand has been a deeply Indian enterprise since the mid-1950s, with the last traces of British management fading in the early 70s. And in India, Royal Enfield inspires fierce loyalty among riders. Just last year, Royal Enfield sold over 820,000 motorcycles within India alone. But outside of India, the brand hasn't held the same influence, with some riders still viewing it as British and others treating it as a nostalgic relic of the past. A story of transformation. Those perceptions are changing fast. Thanks to a major revitalization the brand has undergone over the past 15 years. Sales have surged from 50,000 bikes annually in 2010 to 50,000 per month by 2015. And Royal Enfield has worked hard to understand and meet the preferences of international markets. The classic 650 embodies the peak of this evolution. According to Royal Enfield, this journey began in 2008 with the classic 500. Powered by an air-cooled, pushrod single-cylinder engine, it had some reliability challenges, but was a significant step forward from the relatively unchanged models that dated back to 1955. Designed by Englishman Mark Wells, who was based in Newcastle at the time, it was a milestone for the brand's new direction, a quick ride from the pub where our story began. All this context comes to life the first time you see the classic 650. Royal Enfield was once known more for charm than for quality, and rapid growth often challenges that reputation further. But when you encounter the classic 650, it defies these expectations. The details catch your eye. The metallic tink as you tap the steel fenders, the rich, sunlight-sparkling paintwork with hand-painted pinstripes, gleaming chrome touches, and an impressive level of care in every part of the design. It's elegant, understated, and incredibly well-crafted, leaving a lasting impression. And then there's the price. Although the classic 650 sits at the higher end of Royal Enfield's lineup, it remains far more affordable than, say, a Triumph Bonneville T100 or an Indian Scout 60. I cannot emphasize enough what a pretty bike this is. And I think it's important to keep that context in mind when assessing what it's like to ride. This is not an everyday commuting motorcycle. It's not a sport bike. It's not an adventure bike. It's not a touring rig. It is an incredible piece of art that can move at highway speeds. And it does so comfortably and without fuss. On the bike, I'm six feet, one inch tall. Settling into the classic 650 saddle, I was reasonably comfortable, but I certainly wouldn't have wanted to be any taller. That was particularly true as the day wore on. The bike is sold with passenger accommodation, but the pillion seat is easily removable and the aesthetic is better without it. The drawback to this fashion choice, however, 
is that you can't move around to ease pressure points. After a full day of riding, I was feeling some soreness in my back, hips, and knees. Equally, stretching out or getting into a tuck is nigh impossible when the pace quickens. The ergonomics of the bike have you sitting straight up like a good little boy at school, which means you catch all the wind blast. It serves as an incentive to keep things leisurely, which, really, is where the Royal Enfield 648 cubic centimeters parallel twin is happiest. Claiming 34.6 kilowatts of power, just a smidge under 47 horsepower, it is fully capable of earning you a speeding ticket on the freeway, but it does so with quite a lot of vibration. During my time with the bike, I went back and forth on whether I enjoyed that sensation. There's a thin line between buzziness and character. In short bursts, the vibration gives the engine a fun, V-twin feel. But I suspect that long hauls at sustained speeds of 70 miles per hour or above could grow tiresome. Related to speed, the classic question to ask of any British twin is, does it do the ton? I genuinely believe that, under the right conditions, the classic 650 could achieve 100 miles per hour. But I was not able to create those conditions. I tried. There were occasional long straights on our ride, where I tucked down to the best of my ability, pinned the throttle to the stop, and screamed encouragement at the Royal Enfield's engine, watching its analog speedometer needle slowly creep toward that magic number. But I never hit the ton. Additionally, when riding aggressively, I found the rev limiter kicked in surprisingly early in first, second, and third gears. It was pretty easy to find in fourth, too. Some of this has to do with my particular riding style. Admittedly, I like to hold gears, but it's also the case that the engine pulls right to the rev limiter. Power doesn't taper off. It's a case of pull, 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 nothing. The chassis and overall setup also discourage aggressive riding. The stock MRF tube tires come in awkward sizing of 19-inch front, 18-inch rear. The brakes are decent, but definitely not performance. The suspension is not adjustable and feels overly firm for this 168-pound rider. And if you're really making progress, as English riders like to say, the 3.9-gallon tank empties pretty quickly. Royal Enfield's team made sure to top up my bike three times during our 160-mile ride. Remember what I said about context, though? I discovered all these downsides while attempting to keep up with a ride leader who used to be a British road racer. I definitely would not have ridden the bike as belligerently if it were mine, and I find it hard to believe that anyone else would either. When you're riding at normal people speed, the Classic 650 is a much better machine. Its cheerful engine delivers a delightful burbling sound that is simultaneously gentlemanly and cool. 